Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our second best of three tonight. Your casters have not changed, so we don't need to introduce ourselves once again. Nightfall, this time we've got two different teams hitting the battleground of gods. Tell us who they are. So, over in your blue side, it will be Slap and Tickle. That is made up of El Chakos, Yada, Wizard, Kikio, Mio, and... <laughs> did you see what I did there? And Richard Castle. And over on the you, right you, side, of the, yes, I was very. You're not making fun of me and, and mucking <laughs> up Kiki Omeo's name again, are you? We sorted this out on the podcast, man. <laughs> it, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and we have Kraken up over on your red side. That is Skits and Mr. Digital, Kira Hunter, Disney Q, and Crazy Hamish. So we're already into the bands very quickly here. We see a Thor, a. Uh, what's the word? Sir Crit? Sir Kit? But Sir Crit, get it? Oh, the Crit, that, Sir Crit yeah. banned away, but yeah. he's not actually a Sir, he's a Madam Crit. And Thanatos off the board as well to come through. Slap and Tickle looking for some targeted bands. Yeah, they're taking away all the jungle, junglers away from Skitza. As we saw <laughs> in the the Invitational Tournament, his Thanatos was amazing. He, I think he got triple or a quadra? It's highlighted on, uh, on the Smart OCE channel that was broadcasting it. And we do have... Hun Bats now, our last ban, and Sylvanas was actually open. Oh wow, that is a very, but very good thing. But the thing is, on, on back on the other side to come through for Kraken Up if they really do want that one, and I do expect them to lock it away. Four bans focused in and towards the jungle because Skitza is a monster and a real powerhouse coming out of the jungle. His carry potential is widely known and widely feared amongst the league players of the Oceanic server. Rama will be our first non-support lock-in, and it is locked in, and Rama, he's seen a significant climb to fame, and climbing through the tier list of late. Mm-hmm. Definitely top view 80 carries right now. Behind... Uh, because Medusa's come in, I feel like he's behind Shibalonke, but I feel maybe Medusa's equal with Rama at top two, possibly. Well, we'll have to see. Uh, with more competitive Medusa being played. Bastia hovered over right now. Ooh. Ooh. And as I mentioned it, Medusa locked in for Slap and Tickle. Absolutely. They get the Bastet as well, so Skits is going to have to pull something out of the backside here towards the jungle. But second game in a row with a Medusa in it, and the carry potential was there. The bully potential very early on in the laning phase as well was mm -hmm. definitely potent against that Shibalonke. Yeah, well, we'll have to see how it goes against the Rama Athena lane. Sylvanas Medusa, oh, very, very good wave clear right now. Sylvanas with the AoE and knockback actually getting nerfed in the in the next patch, which will be next week, I think. Uh, if you saw in the patch notes, uh, Sylvanas uh, got his basic attacks removed uh, of knock back onto minions so his wave clear is not as strong but it's still definitely very strong because of it. its aoe damage and medusa harass with that uh acid spirit spit is very very strong yeah and she's still got the mobility with the lacerate um and the viper shot acid spray dps is just insane what she can do she's got the petrifier there if she feels like prettying up the uh, the battlefield of the gods by leaving a few statues around. She wants to do that one. It is available. So the bands to come through. Poseidon band away from the mid lane. Ooh. Wizzy, he's going to take that one off the board. Doesn't want any of the opposition playing that one. And the Bologna band as well to come through. That's a that's another jungle slash solo band. Jungle slash solo. It's not locked in it either. But uh, could could we see a Chronos lock in? This Possibly. We going this to that hyper really carry that game. That is Kronos locked in for Yada in that solo lane. And oh, wow, Ra locked in as well for Wizard in that mid lane. Is, is that Kronos Is that Kronos solo or is it Kronos mid lane and a Ra solo? Which would be the stronger into hmm. a Hercules matchup? Because the mid laner is still to come through here from the guys I'm cracking up. I think Hmm. It'll definitely be Ra in the mid lane because Agni's push is too strong for a Kronos. Uh, so they will definitely want that healing against the the Agni early game pressure. 
Uh, and then Kronos in the solar lane. Whoa! I think. Hades. Where are we gonna see the Hades? Where, oh, where are we gonna see Hades? Potentially from hell? From, uh... Ooh, skins on Greek Hercules. Hell? That's, a, that's jungle. Jungle Hercules. Hades solo. Oh, wow. Just from God trading, we can see... Hades is on Destiny Q in the solo lane. Oh, so that's gonna be you... interesting. What's Sorry. the... Is Hercules strong in the, in the... I mean, he's gank pressure with the driving strike and the, the earth break. I, it does have potential for really strong pick ganks. Mm -hmm. but... and, and the driving strike is very good clear as well, and he's able to sustain very well with the mitigate wounds. Th hmm. We haven't seen a Hercules jungle in a long time. Interesting. The team composition is very... It's, it's very strong with the Hercules, the Hades, the Athena, all being able to uh, make very good picks with the Taunt, the uh, Earthbreaker, and the Ultimate from Hades. Mixed in there with the Agni Rainfire Bombs. It's going to be very interesting. Alright, well ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see how this Hercules played by Skitza in the jungle goes, you better not move from your PCs right now. We're going to be right back in just a couple minutes. Do not go anywhere. This is going to be all hell to skelter. Because Slap and Tickle, they will get in their opposition's jungle, guys. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're back and we're going to be into the game. We're on to the battleground of the gods. Your order side are going to be Slap and Tickle, the guys from the Oceanic server that will get into your jungle every single game at level <laughs> 1 without fail. It's Yada on the solo Kronos. Excuse me, El Chuckles is going to be on the kitty cat. Trying to look all pooty in the jungle. Wizards on the Ra in the mid lane. Richard Sul Sylvanas at support. And uh, running around with him. Or should we say slithering? It's gonna be Kikio Mayo. And his. Uh... <laughs> Mio. <laughs> we went through this. Kikio. It's Mio. <laughs> Kikio Mio and his. Uh, his uh, Medusa. It's actually not gonna be a heavy invade. Hmm. Not a five man invade. Is this slap and tickle? Not invading. Something's wrong here. They're jumping about in the mid lane. Interesting. Although it does seem like a little bit of aggression over there in the solo lane between uh, uh, with Yada and El Chuckles. But anyways, from the chaos side on uh, that will be cracking up in the solo lane, we will be seeing Hades coming out from Destiny Q in the jungle. It will be Skitza as the Hercules mid lane will be Mr. Digital. On that agony, Kira Hunter as the AD carry Rama, and supporting him will be Crazy Hamish on the Athena. Ooh. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, no invades, um, a little bit of wandering around. Man, we hyped them up for the invades and all the early aggression, and they didn't give it to us. I'm I'm disappointed. <laughs> it is okay. this this game is slap and tickle. This isn't delete and delete. It's it's kind of strange not seeing an invade coming out of them. 
<laughs> it's, it's weird. Um, also very weird is Kikio Mio has started what looks to be a transcendence. It may also turn into a Heartseeker instead of going for a Devourer's Gloves. So you sort of want this on a Medusa because you want to start the stacks. Oh, nice grab onto Crazy Hamish already, and he's rooted up, and that's the Viper shot taking him down, as well as the Acid Spray to nearly 20% HP already, and it's not even a minute into the game. And that's the yeah, aggression absolutely. from Brishy Castle and Kiki Mio. I tell you, he's got enough potions, so he is going to be fine on this one. Does have the mark of the Vanguard as well, so all damage taken reduced by five, but that won't stop the amount of damage that Richard Castle and Kira Hunter can put out. Oh, sorry, Kira. Kikio Mio and Richard Castle. Richard Castle is going to land that Grasping Roots once again. One more auto. Kikio oh. Mio. We get his name right, and he lands it up for a kill on towards the left-hand side. We didn't see the early invades, but the invades come through now. And Wizard and El Chuckles, they're going to steal away a back camp. Skits is in towards the mid lane. He's going to get an Earthbreaker driving strike on a Wizard who barely misses being drove, driven into that tower. And now he's ticking so low. Skits is looking for one more auto. He's going to find it. So now it's one and one. El Chuckles won't be able to follow up and find anything at all. Gets a Razor Whip out. He says, hey, take this. Eat it. Yes. <laughs> and, walks away. And, and although we didn't get any early aggression from, uh, like you said, uh, before minions spawned, we do see that backhands invade. And the Sylvanas Medusa aggression is insane right now. Rich Castle was landing those grasps with no uh, no root, no verdant, gra verdant growth, I think is the number one ability that yeah, is. Verdant growth. Mm -hmm. And... He, he was able to land two of them without landing any root beforehand. Very, very good aim. Those are, Sylvanas grabs are by far one of the hardest abilities in the entire game to land. Up there with the Hercules Breaker as well. And Destiny Q is pressuring Yara in the solo lane. Uh, for those of you who don't know how Hades works in the solo lane, he has got a crazy amount of push because he will use that Death from below, apply that passive of Blight, and then he will use Devour Souls on the entire wave, and what that does, it will explode each and every minion to deal AoE damage around them. So the wave clear is insane, and it will also heal Hades as well. So oh, his wave pressure is so strong against Yada in the early game. And to get Skitzer and Mr. Digital rolling, he actually rotates towards that mid lane, gets the right hand side mid camp, and all the pressure from that one, the cats go uh, down. Three Down minutes. Down comes a solar blessing as well. Slap and tickle aren't slap and tickling there. Absolutely burning through this gold fury. But Crazy Hamish is finally going to get a spot down on towards it. We're about to have a tar come through. Crack it up. They're going to steal Crack the it up. gold fury. The cats are out of there now as well. Down comes the ultimate. Digital's got the damage. Chuckles is going to drop. Wizard will get a response kill. What can they find? Digital's going to find Castle. And well, it's going to be the Castle's rock and shaken from slap and tickle. That searing pain though. Slap and Tickle still looking for more. Divine Light will do enough for Wizard to find himself a couple of kills. So he's two and one. But uh, Gold Fury stolen away by Kraken Up and Slap and Tickle. They're regretting that decision. That was. Uh, I mean, it was a good call. To be fair, it was good. It was just a really unfortunate rotation by Crazy Hamish, and he was able to steal it away with a hog tier one. If. It was just really unfortunate there that he was walking right past as it was extremely low. Give it five more seconds and Sap and Tickle would have had it. And they would have been able to turn the fight around as well. Unfortunately that was three kills to Kraken up as well as the Gold Fury and now they're 1,200 gold in the lead. Can Sap and Tickle take it back though? We'll have to see. It's very similar amount of XP as well. Slap and Tickle are currently behind and I feel like a huge proportion of that fight was the cats being dropped from Chuckles to try and get mm -hmm. on towards that Gold Fury and burn through it as quickly as they possibly could. He didn't have that ultimate online for the fight following and they couldn't do anything about it. So, you know, they can't really do too much when they, when they don't have a huge early pressure ultimate missing from the early pressure that they put on towards the Gold Fury. Mm-hmm. And I didn't actually see how many... Oh, Richard Castle got taken down very, very early there, and now... Oh, Whoa, Earthbreaker in the duo lane. strike over in the duo lane. They've got the confound. Down goes the ultimate from Richard Castle, but it's not what he needs. The Petrify was there in response from Kiki Omeo, but he won't be able to find anything. And the brother duo lane between Richard Castle and Kiki Omeo, 
They're gonna lose the castle, and well, it ain't no just no rook in this one. It's worth gold. <laughs> Well played, once again. <laughs> um, so this is a heart seeker actually picked up by Kiki. Uh, he's already on 14 stacks. He actually lost a couple stacks because of that gold fuel. Actually, did he? I'm not too sure when he bought it. He's on 15 stacks right now. Uh, so he... I think he got it at the end of that fight. Oh, okay. I, don't, I don't think yeah. he had it online, like straight up for that one. Okay. Uh, hmm, 18 stacks though, and Heartseeker is extremely risky, it gives you a lot of move speed actually, that is 8%, as well as 30 physical flat power, uh, so you're getting a lot of uh, physical power boost from those stacks, so if Kraken Up are able to focus him, they'll be able to shut him down quite easily. Right hand when side, Nid Cams go Kraken Up's way, left hand side to go the way of Slap and Tickle, they get a ward down as well, wards are plenty right now. I'll chuckle spots out a ward with his own uh, sentry ward. So I'll at least get some vision clearing and vision. Destiny Q, solo line. Oh, okay. Yada was able to rewind after Destiny Q used their ultimate on him and reset those cooldowns and was able to use that stop time, time rift combo to deal the rest of the damage on Destiny Q, who was only on 50% HP. Wow. And that's the power of Kronos. And now he's taking a lead. Oh, actually, no, because of the Gold Fury and the early pressure, Destiny Q is still ahead, but that's that's Yada being able to catch up quite easily now because of that kill. Absolutely, Skits is going to get a driving strike on towards Yada, and there's no minions on this tower now. He's going to tank two shots. Down comes the ultimate of Skits. He's going to get the knock up and will clean that kill up, but Chuckles is there. Drops the cats a little bit late on this one, and now there's gonna be an Agni on the way, looking for some stun potential, but it's online for Chuckles. He walks away totally fine, and he's happy. He got himself a kill. Yeah, it was really unfortunate there for Yarda and he didn't have his ultimate there, unfortunately. Good pick up there by Skitzer, but also good return there by L Chuckles. And he's gonna lose and now, eight of these Doom Orb stacks as well. The rotation from Wizard. Onto this duo lane, will he be able oh, to pick up anything? Oh, blink into the ultimate to come through. He's gonna try and lock up someone. It's hey, crazy Hamish that's able to get out of there with a preemptive strike. He's gonna live through that one. Kira Hunter didn't even get knocked up by the ultimate of Sylvanas, so they're gonna be totally fine. A lot of pressure on towards this left side tower. They might even want this one from Slap and Tickle. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna be... Ooh. I think uh, they'll get quite a lot of damage off because the art both carries there, but Skits are coming around behind. What will he find? Will he? He might die actually if he's not too careful, but he will back off there. Uh, he knows that they both have a scary amount of damage. Crazy Hamish, he's got the ultimate running. He's got the ultimate, sorry, looking to dive in just in case he needs it. But check out the ward coverage right now, and I'm pretty sure you would say at nightfall there is so many wards down here for Slap and Tick. Yep, on both sides of the map. There's three there around the Gold Fury. One of them, oh, sorry, four there around the Gold Fury. One of them is a Sentry Ward. And on the Fire Giant side, there's three wards down as well. To only the three, four wards, now five, to the entire of uh, Kraken Up. So the ward control is definitely in favor of Slap and Tickle. However, the territory though, they are forced back to the red and the Gold Fury is actually in favor of Kraken Up now. Hmm. The vision is very strong with this one. Oh, and now <laughs> in the solo line, Destiny Q taken extremely low. Yada was able to poke him up, but here's Skitza and Mr. Digital. Earthbreaker not landing. Yada able just to walk away very cleanly there. Check out the minion kills over on towards this duo lane. They're so significantly different. The tune of 20 in favor of Kiki Omeo's Medusa over the Rama coming through from Kira Hunter. That is an intense lead. That is not an intense lead you want to be playing into either. Mm-hmm. And although in Smite you do not uh, lose, you still gain a percentage of the gold even if you don't get the last hit. You still get a qu quite a substantial amount of gold if you do get the last hit. And we do have a pause coming out here. Seems that wizard has disconnected, but we can fast forward through this guys easily yeah absolutely if i'm in charge of party control i might just do that you know i might also watch <laughs> crabs for three minutes who knows <laughs> and then i might get very crabby when my when my favorite game show smite doesn't continue for a fair while that might even happen but 
Anyway, pause in the gameplay. It's a really, really good time to uh, look over the map and, and start to take stock of our lanes. Biggest advantage? It's going to be in that mid lane. Oh, not even actually. Look at the difference between our AD carries and then look at the counter difference in between the mid laners. Sorry, the difference in gold between the AD carries? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. That's 6k gold? Sorry, not 6k, 600 gold. Wow, that's actually quite a lot. And only one... <sighs> The only difference is one assist, and that's to Kira Hunter on top of Kiki Amiu. Me, why is his name so difficult? I'm just <laughs> going to call him Kiki for the rest of the game. I'm going <laughs> to so, call him Medusa. <laughs> he's a level above. He's died once, uh, and he has one less, or it seems that Wizard has returned, and one less assist, but he's still 600 gold ahead. And the Gold Fury was to Kraken up, so he's doing an extremely... Uh, good job over there pressuring that lane so that Kira Hansa loses so much gold to the tower. Yeah. So um, much we may so have jumped. He's... Sorry? I was just Fun? about to say, I'm in charge of our, um, of our broadcast state because I'm actually leading this, this spectating party. So if we actually fast forwarded through that pause and out the other side, I, I'll take the blame for that one. We're now going to jump back and try and pick up the game. There it is right now coming back online so sorry for that one full apologies but uh look at this ward coverage slap and tickle starting to plant a lot around this gold fury as it respawns mm -hmm. and they definitely want to look like this one after what happened in the last oh. one. Oh, kira hunter picks up kikio mio and they do a lane crazy hamish was taken a little bit low and the ultimate was used by kikio mio and he wasn't able to pick up a kill very good there uh, sorry very good pick up there for kraken uh, up to shut down kiki Oh, and he actually lost... Sorry. Yeah, he, he lost a lot of those Heartseeker stacks as well. That's very yeah. important with this next Gold Fury fight. Going to be a major point of contestion. Skits is going to go deep, looking for the stun on towards Wizard. And down comes the support of Olympus, I believe, coming through from Pe Crazy Hamish. And Defender of Olympus will get him there, but not enough to find a kill. Gold Fury is going to be started up. Chuckles is looking to go for the back line. And Nightfall, I'm not sure they can take this one. Oh, it's 3v4 right now. One uh, Hunter's tanking up the Gold Fury. That's a lot of damage down onto Skitza, actually. He uses that Mitigate Wounds. Our Chuckles is looking oh. for it. Oh, and the blink in from Richard Castle and Rama's in the air as well. Our Chuckles being the focus of the Rama shots. Torn now onto three people. Oh my gosh, there is the Excavate as well. The heal goes down and the Rainfire as well to try and return some damage. But Slap and Skitter will be able to pick it up there. Destiny Q is now rotated over, he's going to look for that ultimate, it's on towards five people at this point in time, but he's taking so much Gold Fury, Slap and Tickle will get the Gold Fury as well, but now it's the chase on towards Minster Digital, two for one at this point in time, Slap and Tickle with all the advantages, and they're starting to pay dividends, they find the kills, they get themselves a Gold Fury back in the opposite direction, and well, even though you're a god of the underworld, heading to that underworld will still grant your opponent's gold. And if we look at the graphs, look at that massive spike in gold for Slap and Tickle there. They went from nearly equal to 2.237k uh, 2, 2 gold ahead now. That is a massive spike, and that is a lead that they definitely want, and now they have to capitalize on it with the extra gold that they do have in their pockets now. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. I mean, right now, they're, they're, they're a little bit big. In the way of XP as well, massive spike, you mentioned it from that gold fury, but the kills that followed it up to two, the tune of 2.7k currently, man, it's just about to get intense. Because, crazy yep. Hamish, he wants to make some action go down, <laughs> Mr. Digital, he wants to rain fire from above. And Wizard, 4 and 1 right now, this is, that is a very scary Ra right there, he's got his Kronos Pendant, he's gonna be able to use, oh, it looks like Kiki trying to get a lot of damage off on Kira Hunter, wow, that was a lot of damage, only 2 of the 3 Viper shots landed, and he got him down to half and HP. he's gonna get stunned up, and in comes the rest of the squads, gonna dodge out most of the damage, but that Reign of Fire will do a lot, and then comes that Path of Fire as well, they're looking for the final snipe, but Digital's gonna get dropped by the Chuckles, Kiki oh, wow. and but now in the air is Rama, he finds two, will the third be any worth it? No, it's not gonna find or do anything, Kira Hunter's got an, oh, a Defender of Olympus at least to stop himself from going down, but the turnaround from Slap and Tickle, Kiki Mio. Man, he, sells, he tells the opposition, don't go aggressive on me, you're just gonna get bit.
Yeah, that was a very good B1 turnaround. He's taken extremely low, and unfortunately, Kira Hunter didn't fire his third shot of the Astral Barrage to try to kill him. I think he might have if he landed it. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to pick it up there. And looking at the build coming out of Kiki, he has Asai or ASI, however you want to say it. He has Ninja Tarbi for the attack speed as well, and he has Heartseeker. So a lot of his damage is coming out of the stacks. He does have Penetration and uh, from ASI, and a lot of the base damage from... Um, from his abilities, but most of his damage is coming from that heart sequence stacks. So if Kraken up are able to take him down, he's going to be extremely, extremely weak. Unless he picks up yeah. another item such as Rage or Deathbringer. I feel like Deathbringer is a very, very good item for uh, for Medusa because you deal your damage in a burst with that Viper shot, and you want to get the crits off with that Viper shot as well. Look at this it? sentry hmm. ward coverage to come through again from Slap and Tickle. Oh, wow. It is just intense around this. The look at the deep wards as well. They've wow. got five wards on this left-hand side of the map. So deep in the jungle. So vision control around the gold fury as well. They're going to be clearing out as many wards as their opposition want to drop down. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And that's... Wow. Four sentry wards for Slap and Tickle. Five, four on the map. So four out of five team members have placed a sentry ward somewhere on the map, as well as, uh, a, like you said, the deep wards. Wow. <laughs> this is great ward coverage by Slap and Tickle. And they, they can see pretty much everything. They can see all the rotations from every single enemy. So they can, they can do whatever they want. They can go wherever they want because they know exactly where the enemy is. And it may look like full hardly aggression into opposition jungler points of this game as we're about to find out on towards Mr. Digital. Unfortunately, the Searing Pain not to help out that Ra. Look for the Ra Ra Room blow up on towards Agni, but Crazy Hamish is going to eat some Searing Pain or a Celestial Beam of sorts in that mid lane. And look at how confident Chuckles is to come up in here behind this tower in the left hand side of the map. And it isn't very much health remaining on it. He's going to look to dive it in just a few seconds. Ram is going to dive forward. This could be a oh, mistake, that's his escape. That's his escape down, and here is the jump in from El Chuckles. Oh, mm, he didn't know. Kira Hunter did not know that El Chuckles was right there, and he went aggressive, unfortunately. I feel like maybe Kiki could have soloed him out there. He is Medusa, and his burst is substantial, and he does have that Asai, so his boxing is going to be extremely good there and now here comes a four-man rotation kiki's going to be able to recall wizard is left in that duo lane mr digital looking for him although he's trying uh, el chuckles is distracting oh man that verdant and... growth from richard castle to delay that one and stop the engage if crazy amy should got any further forward that could have been a dead el chuckles oh possibly yeah although he does have the pounce as well bastet is one of the slipperiest guards in the game next to sir Kiet. Ooh, and now they're looking for this gold fury. The sentry one on top of it, and now just a little bit of razor whip there, and the, the pounce away from the rain fire. Ooh. But check out this right hand side of the map as well. Look at where Kira Hunter is forced to help his off his team out. And I mean, he may have gone the Heart Seeker as well. This could be a shift in the AD carry items that we're starting to see. When you're held that deep on your right hand side of the map, there is next to no chance of you getting to this Gold Fury. And that's all down to Yada's pressure. Mm hmm. We didn't even see him take that tier 3 tower. That's, that's part of the gold increase. That's 5.7k gold in the lead now. Uh, slap and tickle above cracking up, and it looks like an engage is about to happen around this Gold Fury. Really crazy Amish goes diving deep. Terror. Oh, Castle's gonna do a lot, but Hades is in the middle of this fight, look what he's doing, but Kira Hunter way too far forward, Skits is not gonna driving strike anything, and Chuckles is out of mana, but he's safely out of there, he turns and finds himself. Now a Hercules, Destiny Q is trying to dive out on the backside, but the turn of rest of Slap and Tickle goes on towards the Gold Fury Yada with the snipe! Ooh. Underneath the tier 2 tower, this man's got no fear. He eats tier 2 towers for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then he dives you under them to save uh, save himself as well. <laughs> and all the while, Rewind was still up 
through the end of that uh, team fight, so he didn't have to use his ultimate, and that is the marks of a very, very good Kronos player. And now he's hit the late game, he's got his core items, he's got a Doom Orb and a uh, Demonic Grip, so I almost forgot the name of it. And that's a lot of damage on my guys right now. As well, oh, I keep saying about builds and the Heartseeker coming out of Kira Hunter. He did go down there, so he lost quite a lot of stacks. And he's picked up Haste and Fatalis. Now, this build was. I th I'm, don't quote me on this. It was originalized or created by Adoraxia in that you don't have to buy boots because you get the base movement speed increase from all these items. And Fatalis also gives you a lot of mobility because you don't lose that basic attack slow while you're attacking. So it'll keep him moving quickly in the team fight as well as outside the fight because of the base move speed. But he is, I don't want to say quite low on physical power because he does have Devourer's Gloves, but he's also relying a lot of damage on that Heart Seeker as well. Yeah, and right now he's working on getting that one stacked back up because there's no creep waves anywhere near him. He's forced to farm those back camps. Mm -hmm. And, well, that's that's not what he wants to be doing. He is just looking yeah. for any stacks he can find around the jungle, because there's so few and far between right now. You know, looks like Slap and Tickle are looking around this fire giant. Maybe they want to pick it up, or they're going to make a pick, possibly on Crazy Hamish. He's forced to dash away. And that was actually quite a lot of damage on towards the tank with just Razor Whip from El Chuckles. And Skitzer was caught by a Verdant Growth, and there's the torn onto two people. Absolutely crazy. Careful, Hamish though. is going to be the one focused down. Chuckles is going to pick up that. But oh, look at the Verdant Grasp or Grasping Roots or whatever you want to call it on towards Skitzer. <laughs> and they just dumped the damage down on towards him. And look at that. They've got that Sylvanas there to top them back up. There is one member missing, but it's the all important one if you want to steal a Gold Fury. That is Hog3 actually on uh, Skitzer as well, so if he's lucky, he might be able to Driving Strike in, get it stunned onto Rich Castle, and maybe steal it, but Wizza already Whoa, takes Skitzer's it down to 50% HP. Oh, Skitzer's in a wall of pain! Ooh. Tick, tick, boom is going to come through from that Razor Whip, and it's got all the damage it needs. Got Fire Giant is still underneath the focus, and Chuckles is looking for whatever he can. Defender of Olympus is on towards Destiny Q. Wizza's going to get focused out. Fire Giant already gone down, and that's now in favor. Terra... Oh, it's gonna come down from Wretched Castle, and now the Taunt is gonna come through from Crazy Hamish, and the Burst was there from K Kira Hunter on the backside, but now he's got Yada on top of him, all over him and all out of him. Wizard still lives with a sliver of health, and Destiny Q can't reinitiate this fight. It's all but over. Crazy Hamish and Destiny Q, the only two members still alive. Destiny Q is gonna get through a wall. Oh, Yada's on the other side of it, will get silenced up. But he's still got that auto attack damage. One more to clean it up. Yada will find that one. And the only two to drop, El Chuckles and Kikio Mio. They'll lose that fire giant buff. They'll lose the red ring of doom for their opposition. But it doesn't mean as much when the three other members have got it. And especially on Yada. Yada was able to keep it through the entire fight. And he's still got his ultimate again. A team fight where he wasn't forced to use his ultimate. He was able to pick up the 80 carry as well off the back side of that team fight. And he's still got the fire giant. Wow. That was that was very well played there by Slap and Sickle, but also well played there by Kraken Up. They were able to take the Fire Giant from the AD Carry and the Jungler from Slap and Sickle. So they were dealt their cards and they did their best with it. And unfortunately, we did lose three in that team fight. Only I, I think four, because Skitzer went down very very early in that fight, but he was able to respawn. And Crazy Hamish, I'm pretty sure there was an unofficial digger side. All of Kraken Up died because Crazy Hamish was picked off right at that, and then they moved towards the Fire Giant. I'm... Hmm? I kind of lost. <laughs> Very well played there by both teams. Uh, but Slap and Circle still in the lead. They were able to get the gold and the Fire Giant buff. Now they're 11k up, looking towards these Phoenixes, because all towers are down now for Kraken Up, and it's not looking good for them. Yeah, and they ain't gonna be respawning either. Wizard gets torn it up with the Confounder come through, but immediately beads us that one up. Does not want to be risking anything. They've got so much heal. The Petrify, Kick Your Mia, so confident, he's so far forward. And the ultimate from Richard Castle doing so much work. He's gonna grab in digital as well, but the fight's starting to split up. Goes towards the mid lane where Kick Your Mia is just ripping through with the opposition. And I tell you what, there is no defense in the world that is going to stop cracking up from losing one, potentially two Phoenixes right here. 
Mm-hmm. And Slap and Circle dealing so much damage. That Phoenix is going down so quick. Wow. 20 to 10 is the score. 23 minutes into the game. 13k gold. And like you said, a sick of Phoenix is falling down right now. Crazy Ambush comes in. Oh, and there's Destiny Key. Will we see the Pillar of Agony? No, we will not. Oh, that was... A good drive uh -oh, strike. Oh, get out of here! You've just been dumped on, and they're gonna grab Destiny Q as well. In the meantime, Yada says, "I want you and you and you." Gets on a rampage, cleans out the opposition, and cleans out their Titan as well. And it's cracking up. They're gonna need to go back to the drawing board and search for something new. Slap and tickle once again, living up to more than their name. They're gonna go delete combo delete. <laughs> And that was, oh, Yada played very well that game. He went 7 and 2, and Wizard also went 6 and 1. He only died once. That's actually very, very good there. Um, on that Ra. This was only match 1 of the of 3, guys, so stick around to catch match 2 very shortly. Very well played there by, by both teams, and we'll see if Kraken Up can come back in the next match.